Hello everyone and welcome to Red Hot UK. Yes, it is. We're in the middle of a heat wave here in the United Kingdom and um, we've had thunderstorms today. But if you can see sweat performing or appearing on my brow, then I do apologize. Um, I'm filming this underneath my key light. So not only is it hot, but it's also a little bit hotter because of the light. Anyway, in this week's video um, about Mithras, I'm going to do something slightly different because I'm going to share with you an interview that I had with Mr. Pickles, who plays Bartby, our theist, in our campaign. I hope you do enjoy this video and if you do then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel and why don't you let me know in the comments below who you would like to hear interviewed next. Can you hear that? That's my remote control um, cleaning bot in action. Without further ado, let's get straight on to the in interview and I first started by asking Mr Pickles why he played a theist in the Mithras campaign. Over to you guys. Well, I've always been attracted as a player to, to usually playing like a wizard or a caster because I like the idea of being able to break the rules of reality mm. and, and leverage some sort of power on that setting. But since I always played a wizard, that, that's kind of a selfish role in my opinion. So when you're playing a wizard, you're seeking knowledge for yourself. And so I had been feeling a desire to play a divine caster. And uh, th this was the perfect chance to, to play a divine caster. And I wanted to play a, a theist kind of character, a, a traditional good god following character, a goddess in my my case, yeah. um, because it's it's a lot less selfish. And, and I feel like that's that's a, a safer role almost to play. You don't have to worry about going out for knowledge. You just have to follow your God's will or your goddess's will. Um, so that's and, interesting. And I also liked... Yeah, oh, go, go on. Ahead. No, you go. I, I was going to say, I, I also really liked the idea of having all of my, my leverage on reality being helping my, my friends because uh, that certainly makes the character a lot, lot more popular, I think, within the group is when you're exclusively helping everybody everybody's willing to put mm. their neck out or their shield out to save you from fire Bartleby sort of like um is quite devoted to Amriel and I was just wondering you know when you're actually playing Bartleby how much of the time do you actually think about Amriel and what she would want rather than what Bartleby might want that's a good question because I do sort of play Barleby as as having his own goals still, mm. his own fears a lot. As I, I play him up as a bit of a coward, a lot of scenarios. Um, but I I think in cases where there's a big moral dilemma that I'm not 100 percent sure of, I I think about what Amriel would do. The, the specifically in the case of can I enter a romantic relationship with Bria? Yeah, <laughs> that's something I just I just sit there going. I'm so new to the faith that I just, I don't know if my goddess is okay with this because I know the priests are kind of frowning on it heavily and I just kind of fidget there and think to myself uh, mostly because I don't want to just spam the entire session uh, with devotion. Uh, yeah. Um, but because we, yeah. we we use devotion um, differently to some other campaigns because we almost like use it like an ideal role from Call of Cthulhu, don't we? In the sense that if Bartleby is puzzled or he's not too sure, then we use that devotion as a, a, a almost like a skill to see whether or not um, Amriel can give him direction. Um, I, I was just interested, you know, that Bartleby is quite selfish um, for himself. I, he, he always wants to help others. But I remember in the last session when the barbarian got through to you, uh, all of a sudden he seemed to almost, almost like had that self-preservation uh, reaction when he called up the, um, the shield of Emrel. What was going through your mind then? 
Um, oh man, that was a full panic scene because I did not expect that to happen. Uh, and so I, I figured Barleby was just literally chilling at the table watching Hengist with Hengist's beautiful shield with the magic of Amriel glowing on it. I didn't think that I'd be a part of this fight. I thought I'd just be kind of uh, <laughs> watching my friends deal with the big bad guys. So when you had that barbarian sprint around, uh, it, it was very much a panic. Amriel, please save me. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's one of the cases where I'd say I act selfishly because uh, I I like for Bartleby to use his prayers to help others. Yeah. I'd rather use protection on on other characters than have my goddess stick her neck out for me again. So within our campaign, we we have folk magic, um, but Bartleby sees folk magic as almost like prayers, and then he sees um, miracles, the miracles um, from Amriel, or do you think, does Bartleby see both of them from Amriel? Well, how does Bartleby play those two areas of magic? I, I do see them both as coming from Amriel, and I really like the difference between Gulliver and Bartleby with uh, mm. our different flavors of, of magic, because we both have folk magic spells. And he calls them his his cantrips, his cantrips. minor spells, yeah. uh, little little tricks that you'd find in in other systems, perhaps. And I kind of done a similar thing with the folk magic that I take, like healing and repair, and uh, I think I have light as well. Uh, yeah. I, I I use that as as prayers for my goddess. Is quick quick lines of memorized prayer, probably from a script or or a a book um, that calls upon Amriel's power. And I think the way we've sort of played it that I quite like is the miracles are much greater, even if they don't take any longer. And, and yeah. that's more of Amriel's direct gaze upon, upon Barleby and, right. and his situation rather than a something that she probably has on auto tap. You yeah. just get those minor heels. She doesn't need to be bothered. And I think the major diff difference between folk well there's several differences between the folk magic and the miracles i mean things like um the actual power of them is quite significantly different you know i think um protection um absorbs 1d3 worth of damage once well yeah. something like uh, the shield of um amriel it is like a big whop off shield that can ward location you know and is serious divine um beings but the, one of the other things that is different is where the power comes from because with the folk magic the prayers that comes from your magic points but the miracles actually come from your devotion um pool now how, how do you link those two together? Uh, how how do you sort of like see those two working as Bartleby? Uh, that's, that's an interesting question because I I always have that little advantage there over a more traditional caster, a uh, wizard mm. or like like Gulliver, um, in that I have about four points I believe dedicated just to miracles that I can yeah. only spend on miracles, and that's the only place I can get them from. So in a sense, I have fewer miracles until I progress further than my initiate status. Yeah. But it's it's really quite nice having that that extra power locked away. And based on how we we've been playing it, is is uh, I get all of my magic points back when I rest, but I can put some of those magic points into recover devotion pool. Yes. Um, so I I sort of see it as that's Barleby's praying. Um, in regular D&D, they'd, they'd have you spend an hour or so meditating and praying to set your spells. Yeah. And I see it in a very similar way, is, is that's praying and, and putting my own energy into dedication to Amriel. Right. And, and the miracles, the devotion pool, it's because of the campaign and the goddess you that Bartleby worships, that leads to having to do it out on... Um, when the moon is out and things like that, which I, I think hopefully just adds a little bit more to the um, how that magic is um, obtained. I, I think that that influenced the type of miracles I went for because I, I went for yeah. vigor and perseverance specifically because they have to do with fatigue, and I assumed with a a priest praying to the moon goddess, uh, he would be up mm. late often and he would need energy to keep going to, to properly please his goddess 
Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of tied it to how I get my devotion points is, is what kind of prayers and miracles he'd be learning. Excellent. So, so I, I think Mithras is quite unique in the sense that the spells, the miracles, should I say, don't actually have levels. There's no levels in it, but there is a rank that you have to be in your priesthood or your order in order to actually cast that spell. How, how do you think about that as a system? Do, is it a system that you like rather than levels like D&D 5th edition or what's your thought about it? I actually quite like it. Uh, when we initially started, I had experience in Call of Cthulhu. So oh, I yeah. kind of related it to Call of Cthulhu. Is it sim it's a similar progression. Um, and I like that that moving by little pieces of time rather than suddenly I have 10 more health points and feeling mm. much more buff because I got to level up in fighter. Um, and I believe there's about five or six skills tied to my goddess type yeah, that I have wow. to get leveled up. Um, and I, I started with uh, really low endurance because my character wasn't really born into the priesthood. Um, and that was one of the things that Amrael likes. Um, and uh, I mean, getting the perseverance and vigor spells and miracles is important to that. So building up my endurance was a long, long route um, of the of the character. I'd like to say a, a lot of the progression has been Barlaby pushing himself, and it's it's interesting to see that from my perspective as a player in game, um, slowly becoming closer to getting a higher priest level yes. or rank, I should say. Because uh, what what rank are you at the moment? Are you initiate? I think you are initiate. I believe so. Yeah, because I think, or are you acolyte? I'm trying to decide. I, because things I, like I think... heal, heal body, which I, I'm sure, oh no, do you have heal wound rather than heal body? Yeah, I have heal wound. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I was supposed to be an initiate when we started. And once no. I got my endurance up <laughs> yeah and i think that's how we played it that we sort of like we did it almost like as you were proving yourself and as you were proving yourself you know your endurance came up because endurance we should say is one of the the um skills that you have to improve in order to go up um further um levels ranks sorry within the um brotherhood I, i'm just looking at the um spells do you think um Bartleby will always go down the route of protection health spells or do you think there's ever a chance that he's going to suddenly come up with thunderclap or lightning or something like that in the future i've kind of had a thought pattern like that um, one of the spells that I wanted to get from the folk magic was shove because I, I thought it might be cool to be able to shove an enemy away from a friend or, yeah. or shove a friend out of the way before they get hit by lava um, something like that but it seemed a little bit aggressive right. for who Barlaby is and, and for well for who Barlaby is um, yeah. so I think for the most part he'll always go for beneficial or helpful spells because I just I don't see him being too much into having a big power to attack. Uh, he's not one to get the rain blood spell or miracle. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm really <laughs> interested that you know that the, in the last session that we had when that barbarian got to Bartleby, did you not think at that point? I wish I had. You know that that sudden fallback spell that you can just sort of like conjure or, or that miracle that you actually call down that bolt of lightning or you know you um leech something from him or even sort of like start doing a massive earthquake or something like that do you, do you does Bartleby never think about those sorts of sort of spells uh that's a good question i because it would be nice to have like um like a beam of sunlight that burns away at evil mm. as something to have as a backup. But I don't know if Barlaby would really think that. I, I had him kind of in my mind as he came from a relatively a merchant class family and he didn't want to be a merchant. He wanted to be an entertainer. And when he got wounded by brigands and hands yeah. smashed to bits, he joined the priesthood. So I, I, I just don't see him 
wanting to get heavy power like that. And and I think it's also because he has friends around him who will save him. His goddess will save him, and if his goddess isn't available to do that, I mean, Gulliver was ready to teleport me out of there, and Hengist and Hazard were charging for blood. You, do you know, I, I thought that was um, such an interesting point in that game. And uh, hopefully we're going to, I'm going to chat like this to um, Chuggerwugga, who plays Gulliver um, as well. But I, I think it's really interesting because I feel both your characters have very similar basis. They're, they're all about protection and saving others. You know, even though yeah. Gulliver um, can sort of like conjure up a rack spell that does damage. I, I sometimes wonder, you know, because he teleports people out the way or he pulls weapons away from people and things like that. And I, I often wonder whether or not really and truly you're both, you know, got very um, similar um, aims in life. I'm not too sure. What do that you think? Good, good point. <sighs> I... I think so, because we both have a couple similar spells in the folk magic. I think we both have heal, and he's got a, his regenerate spell um, yeah. from the sorcerer pool. So we have similar, uh, as you said, bases to, to stand on. We both have streetwise and, and a couple similar professional skills. Uh, but I, I think that's probably why our characters generally work well together. Is we've got a lot of shared shared knowledge and shared yeah. goals. Um, and, it, and it must be reassuring that there's somebody else who's got heal in the party yes. <laughs> because i think there what? was a time that you <laughs> lost an arm no, well I, I think something did you damage your arm at some point i got the... straight up impaled by a goblin uh back when wrath was with our group um and gulliver had to come up with the regenerate to to make it so i wasn't yeah my chest. <laughs> did what happened with the Bratrakians? i'm sure there was a Oh yeah, that, and then the the tentacle monsters ripped off my arm as I was yeah, struggling to evade them. That's right. <laughs> because I got water. I was going to get water to put out the stuff. You, but... Yeah, <laughs> and you got a little bit more than you bargained for. Oh, way more. So Bartleby is um, a member of the Order of Amriel, and one of the things that we can have in orders are gifts. Now, we haven't actually um, played any of these or thought about it at all, but um, for people who want to check them up, they're on page 202 of the core rule book. And, well, you know, when, you know, you get to priest level and you get your first gift, is there something in that list that you think that will be really good for um, Bartleby or the order? Is it something that you sort of like look down and think, yeah, definitely that one? What's your thoughts about it? Well, I, this is the first time I think that I've really looked at this. I might have seen it in a while past, but the one that kind of stands out to me um, is Oracle. Because you've had my goddess Amriel give me kind of strange visions and, and yeah. fractured truths and, and abstract thoughts. Which and I delight it be interesting. in. <laughs> I really do <laughs> delight in those. <laughs> I, I always sit there and feel a little puzzled and go, Amriel, what are you trying to teach me here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think it could be interesting if I if Barleby got a more clarified ability to, to view a few things and be able to tell people with uh, reasonable accuracy, as it states, the, the likely fate of... I think that would be really then. interesting. I wrote a poem once. I've only written one poem in all my life. That was actually called <laughs> The, the Mysterious... The mysterious oracle of night and it was based those the initial letters of mysterious oracle of night actually says moon and it was about the moon and i think that was sort of like connects there quite quite nicely so yeah i can i can imagine priests of amriel being able to do some kind of fortune telling or looking to the future i think they would make them highly desirable in um yes. in the campaign do you want to i've just had another because there's an opposite to you isn't there there's amriel who's the the moon and then there's i think it's mar margroff or i don't even know my it's own just uh, maroff maroff and i was just yeah. thinking that that would you know you might have 
Amriel, um, priests of Amriel, sort of like protecting the good. But if there was an evil person who wanted to have that oracle, then priests of Maroth might be able to actually provide that opportunity. <laughs> That's given me a lot of ideas. So what about restrictions? You know, because there's, there's meant to be restrictions in orders and we haven't got any at the moment because both you and Gulliver are quite low level. You know, what What about as Bartleby sort of like progresses up, um, what sort of like restrictions do you think he should encounter? That's a very good question. I, I think we've toyed around the idea that there might be a restriction on romantic intent yeah. for, for priests, uh, but I, I haven't heard anything set in stone on that. Um, I think it could be cool to make um, make make some more, uh, what's the word for it, um, uh, vows of, of abstinence, yeah. um, like like having to refuse intoxicating beverage or, or something something of that sort um it's it's difficult because it's a moon goddess and i'm not exactly sure what the moon goddess would frown on um I, selfishness you, you, is kind of what comes yes. to my mind i you're just hoping that i don't say that you're not allowed to go out under the sun because <laughs> you can only go out a vampire <laughs> yeah. and, I, and i think I, how I see it as a GM is that as the um, as the campaign progresses, because you're playing Bartleby, Bartleby will probably impose his own restrictions, and that will become <laughs> part of the. Because I'm a great believer that I don't like to set everything out in stone right at the beginning because. Number one, I can't think that far ahead. And number two, I don't want to impose all my restrictions on people. I want almost like that co-creation to happen. And I think as Bartleby is progressing, maybe, you know, it might just become one day that you sort of like say to Briar, you know, I'm sorry, priests of Amriel cannot, you know, and then that would be that that would be that restriction in place so as you get higher level if Bartleby ever gets to higher level and uh, becomes <laughs> a priest of Amriel or a high priest you have the ability to call down divine intervention and this is when you call on the power of your god you're not casting a miracle at all you are just calling I, I, I assume in times of great desperation you just call down the power of your god or goddess and something happens well what's your feelings about that as Bartleby oh, I definitely like the rule that it reduces your devotion down um because otherwise uh, why wouldn't you be calling your goddess as as much as possible to save the day a barbarian yes. comes running at you may as well call your goddess yes um but I think I think that that kind of comes back to the trust that has to happen when there's a divine based character in a campaign. Uh, I mean, I need to trust that you're not going to abuse me with my goddess and you need to mm. trust that I'm not going to abuse the gifts from my goddess. Otherwise exactly. that would be yeah. nonsense. Um, and so I think that, I think divine in intervention for this case would, would work, but that'd be something that I'd be calling up for grand and great monsters, dragons. Uh, yeah they're attacking or um, I, I it was almost like and i know you didn't have to but in that in the tavern when the barbarian comes up to you you know there i i see situations for divine intervention is not when you are taking harm as in bartleby or you're going to get harmed it's more sort of like a lot bigger than that you know yeah if, you know if there's a group of innocents uh, you know, there about to be breathed on by a a dragon, and you're there. You know, it's I I almost like imagine Bartleby saying, "Amriel, please protect them." You know, rather than yeah. please protect us. You know, I might be wrong yeah. there. You might be thinking, <laughs> you know, and almost like being prepared to take the the negatives 
in order to protect yeah. others. Is that how you see yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be a uh, take me instead. Yeah. I also to, think to save them. Yeah. I also think it gives, uh, I, when I was looking at divine intervention, I almost like wanted to make a burnt out priest, you know, that call down so much intervention to save a populace of people that suddenly his devotion is completely gone and he's almost like lost all faith you know in the the divine being and you know especially if he he or she was once a, a thesis of amriel and i go not that, that sounds it. like a <laughs> uh, it sounds like something that would be a movie is yeah. young priest and old priest <laughs> or, or maybe just my campaign we will wait and see <laughs> uh, you know you we i i forget how long we've been playing um our odes campaign but you know what how do you see Bartleby progressing if he survives into the future what what's your plans for him um oh i've been thinking about that a little bit of especially with the moral or religious problem of what to do with bria um mm. i've been wondering where i'd like to take barley because I, I think i've hinted in the campaign a couple of times barley is very much open to learning about other religions even the human-based ones uh, i think gorwin was one that the god yeah. of knowledge that i was expressing interest in, in getting their help and my, yeah. my high priests frowned on that because they just um, just so people know there's two different sets of gods there's the um old gods which amriel is is one of them which i think a lot of people refer to as the true gods and then in the campaign there's the um i think what people call the new gods or the human gods it's almost like what people have created and they tend to be a lot more materialistic like gods of trade and um, crafting and things like that yeah so Bartleby wants to sort of like get a, a bigger overview of the different types of gods yeah anything else and I, I think where where that becomes kind of a problem is that my church obviously didn't support that and they said no we don't deal with those those fake fake religious people mm. and with the growing issue of what would happen if Amriel said yeah go go all out love love Bria uh, because loving people is a good thing yeah but my church said don't do that because we don't Ooh. believe in that is what would happen to Barlaby in that case and I'd like to say if we went long enough that Barlaby had the power to to be like a high priest and Amriel still accepted him I think he'd go off on his own as a prophet of a new faith yeah um try try and bring all of the people together so he rather he than go... have all these separate would he go against the church if if he was pushed i think he would and by pushed i mean mm. knowing that they're not being morally good by his standard i guess um he wouldn't put up for the church declining uh cure disease yeah. to, to random people even if they couldn't pay barlaby is very much he'd be willing to to heal them thinks it'd be wrong to deny them yeah um, so if if they kind of went against that moral grain, I think Barlaby would try and stand up to him and change things. But eventually, he would have to leave if the church was unwilling to work with him. I, I think that's a really interesting proposal in the sense that you know, a lot of people <laughs> think the God and the religion and the church are all in together, but it could be that the church becomes a lot more materialistic, um, loses the the ethos of Amriel's um, preaching and then all of a sudden there's that huge chasm appearing between the two and who will go where I wonder I think that's I think that do you see Bartleby being a high priest uh, I think he's passionate enough um, that if he was guided and allowed to he would eventually reach that level yeah uh, but he's he's young I think yes um, and I, I, um, I'm often thinking, you know, because you have to be a, an acolyte or initiate, initiate for certain periods of time. And I did think about in the campaign, all of a sudden having a break. And when you came back, five years had passed. 
And so all of a sudden, when you meet back in the hairy hobgoblin, Bartaby walks in not as a, an acolyte, but he actually walks in with six other people behind him as the high priest of Amriel. <laughs> you know, and Gulliver almost like floats in with all the power being the head of his order. You know, and this sort of like change and, and whether or not high priests can still afford to adventure or whether or not, you know, like, <laughs> oh, uh, no. <laughs> I, it's a bit like in Star Trek, uh, you know, the captain never goes on the away team. You know, they always say no. And I often thought about that. I just got one last question. Hmm. If you weren't playing a thesis, what would you play? Um, in Mithras. The... The animist, I think the the spirit workers, yeah, the uh, animist, like what Rathen yeah. played originally. I I think that would be my go-to because I would like to be a little bit more combat based. If I took up a new character, oh, a Barnaby you... is nothing in combat. <laughs> but how, so, do you mean a mystic? Oh, because um, Rath yes, played a mystic. a mystic. Yeah, so like a monk, they 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 classic monks. So you have um, things like you can. In, well one of the things that they have is that all your standard roles you only in combat you only need easy to succeed now you know so i think oki was a mystic you know animists yeah. animists deal with spirits and battle spirits which bartleby has had encounters with <laughs> haunts and things like that but they can sort of like yeah. commune with spirits. They can um, go onto the astral plane, the spirit world plane, and actually combat spirits and everything like that. They, they're they the true, um, what we would call shamans, and what you guys call shamans, I think. that That's what they are. So mystic or animist, do you think more the mystic and having a bit of oomph? I was thinking animist initially, but after that, I think I would probably, if I made a new character, it'd be a mystic. Uh, yeah. Spirit of the cat. <laughs> yeah, and you have cool things like arrow cutting, which allows you yeah. to knock um, arrows out the way. Not that anybody fires arrows in the game of um, <laughs> Mithras at all. No, well, it's been um, fantastic talking to you, and let's hope that Bartleby continues to follow the path of Amriel and, you know, eventually reaches what what he aims to become. Yeah. Definitely. And thank you for having me on your show. Uh, yeah, no worries.